Live from Waterford and Dungarvan, this is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Sinead Ahern. Today's top stories, 12 new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed in Waterford. First round CAO offers are due to be released in an hour's time. A small protest will be held near the Port of Waterford this afternoon to highlight the live export of animals and in sport, John Sheridan's expected to depart to Waterford FC after tonight's game. A Waterford GP says the increase in coronavirus cases locally is not alarming. Twelve cases were confirmed for Waterford yesterday, the largest increase in a day since April. However, there were no cases announced for Waterford on Wednesday and just two on Tuesday. Austin Burns says there's been a surge in the number of COVID tests being carried out in recent weeks. We're coming off such a low base, you know, as they say, double nothing is still very little. Going from from very little to 12 in, in terms of absolute numbers is still very low. Those 12 as well are 12 detected cases coming off the back of a surge, uh, a huge quantity of screening. So it's not surprising that we go from, you know, single ones and twos uh, to, to larger numbers and early double digits because of the sheer volume. And there has been a huge ramp up in volume. That 12 cases may not reflect a single day and likely doesn't. It's probably additive across a couple of days because with that surge, we did have a slight lag in results coming back. The number of calls from parents has increased since schools reopened. Dr Burns encouraging parents to contact them if they have any concern about their child. With children, the message is first and foremost safety, significant fever, significant symptoms, concern about the child, contact your GP. And that's regardless of the whole COVID thing, you know. Um, A sick child with fever who's unwell in any regard or a child who's who's got viral symptoms who, who attends school usually, the GP contact in that case is to decide really about the need for COVID screening and and to safety net against any decline in in illness symptoms. The government has chosen to delay making a decision on further COVID restrictions for Dublin. The National Public Health Emergency Team yesterday recommended a further clampdown on gatherings in people's homes, but but a call won't be made until Tuesday, as our political correspondent Sean Defoe reports. After increasing numbers of positive testing in Dublin, Neffet recommended that gatherings in people's homes be limited to six people from two different households in the capital. It follows a trend of community transmission in people's homes. It also recommended that pubs that don't serve food shouldn't open in Dublin on the 21st of September if cases continue to rise. The government has chosen not to make a decision on this until next Tuesday when it will publish a six to nine month roadmap for living alongside the virus. That plan will rate every county on a scale of one to five for how prevalent the virus is, with one being minimal restrictions needed and five being very severe restrictions and closures of shops and pubs. The rating will be decided on cases per 100,000 over a two-week period rather than the individual daily numbers, with other inputs also considered. It's been a political decision to delay taking action in Dublin. Senior ministers want to give the capital the weekend for people to take their own personal responsibility and limit contacts to reduce the spread of COVID. It would also prefer to make all the big decisions for the next phase in one big go next Tuesday and reset all the current advice. But without a change in those numbers, there will be further restrictions for at least Dublin next week. This year's Leaving Cert students are said to be relieved the ordeal is coming to an end. The first round of CAO offers are due to be released in an hour's time. Points are expected to be higher for many courses as a result of grade inflation brought on by calculated grades. Guidance counsellor Betty McLaughlin explains how this afternoon's process works. The results come out at two, they log in uh, to their CAO account and then they have until Wednesday at 3 p.m., Wednesday the 16th of September, to accept that course. And uh, I suppose it's important to remind them if, you know, in accepting that course, it doesn't put you out of the competition should you be, should some extra places become available. Jerry Deegan's a fitting instructor at Waterford Wexford ETB. He says students should definitely think about choosing the apprenticeship route. For years and years and years, it was all about go to college, go to college, go to college, go to college. But not every kid knows what they want to do in college. And college is extremely expensive. So the option is they can go serve their time. It kills, it, it, it does two things. It puts money in their pocket and it gives them a career path to follow. A Sinn Féin TD says 29 Waterford primary schools had classes of 30 children or more last year. Ireland has some of the highest pupil-teacher ratios in Europe. Donica O'Leary told WLR's Damien Tiernan that one Waterford school had 36 children in the class. In Waterford there are 29 
schools in that situation, as I say, there could be several classes of over 30, and I'm sure people can think of schools in their own local area that that might be the case. The largest class in Waterford last year was 36. So, like, I mean, if you think of a teacher in that situation trying to teach 36 children and trying to ensure that they all get enough attention. Waterford Institute of Technology is celebrating its 50th anniversary in 1970. The then Regional Technical College, known locally as the Regional, opened its doors. WIT now has over 10,000 students and is the largest college in the southeast. Former WIT President Ray Griffin Sr. and his son Ray Griffin Jr., a lecturer at the college, spoke on Daisha today. Ray Sr. was the president for 23 years. It, it's a remarkable thing to see an institution starting uh, 50 years ago, to see the first few students rambling in across the <laughs> campus and um, and look at what has happened since then. It's just a, a whole mass of memories that most of which could not be foreseen. It probably was inevitable that Ireland was just r- ripe for uh, an expansion of a higher education. A small protest will be held near the Port of Waterford this afternoon to highlight the live export of animals. Ethical Farming Ireland say the livestock vessel Atlantic M is docked at Bellevue to collect around 3,000 young bulls for Libya. Caroline Rowley is director of the organisation. The length of the sea journey causes illness and injury to these animals. It takes nine days to get to Libya. The seas can be very, very rough and choppy. Um, Very quickly the pens get full of waste from the animals. There's high levels of humidity and ammonia that cause respiratory illness and that's actually the the biggest cause of death during these journeys. And also the pens become very slippy. So the animals slip and and they break limbs and you know they have to be euthanized. She says the protest will take place at two o'clock at Sleever Roundabout. It's going to be very small. We're just going to you know we want to want to highlight that this because a lot of people don't even know that Ireland does export um, animals, to, to, especially on these long sea journeys. So we're just going to be standing with placards and um, you know, signs just to, to, to highlight what's going on to the public. Taxi drivers from Waterford and around the country are due to stage a mass rally in Dublin next Tuesday. The drivers are protesting at what they claim has been a lack of government support during the pandemic. Wilbur Shaw from the, is from the Waterford Taxi Association and is a member of the Irish Taxi Council. Now, in Waterford City, we have a situation where you have 300 taxis in Waterford and they're finding it very hard to make a living. It's nearly impossible to make a living out there now. There's chaps out there on the working 8 and 9, 10, 12 hours a day and they're lucky if they're going home with 70 or 80 euros. And funding's been awarded to six towns and villages in Waterford to help communities shop, socialise and work safely during COVID-19. All six applications from Waterford Council have been successful under the scheme. Mayor of Waterford City and County, Councillor Damien Gagan, says Waterford will receive €174,000. Six projects spread throughout uh, the county of Waterford from Clashmore, Kilmeaden, Bunmahan, Portlaw, Capperquin and Ardmore. And that's in addition to the uh, six successful projects which were announced last month. So it's, it's fantastic. It's good news for Waterford. It's great to see it being spread throughout the county. It'll really enhance those towns and villages. And I, I just want to compliment the council for being quick off the mark for submitting those projects in a timely fashion. A very good afternoon from the sports desk. I am Nigel Kelly, starting with soccer, where John Sheridan is set to leave Waterford SE this evening. Sheridan has become the subject of interest from cash strapped League One side Wigan. The new manager who could take over from him is the latest point of discussion with an appointment from in house likely. Matt Keane has more. Who's going to replace him? I suppose the obvious one everybody is talking about is uh, Alan Reynolds. But will Alan Reynolds come back? That's the big, big uh, question there. But in my humble opinion, I think the man is already there. And that's uh, Franny Rocket. Franny Rocket is an absolutely brilliant coach. I know the players have wonderful time for them. I, for him. I see them, you know, working with him uh, once a week at the training. And uh, they have a great time for Franny Rocket. In what would be his last game, the Blues are away to Bohemians tonight at a quarter to six. We'll have live commentary on WR thanks to McConnell's Toyota Waterford with Matt Keane and Ray Scott on duty. Tonight's other game sees Dundalk welcome Shelburne to Oriel Park. Kickoff in that one is at eight o'clock. While in England, Leeds United manager Marcelo Bielsa has signed a one year contract until the end of the current season. The Argentine guided them to their first promotion to the, to the top flight in 16 years recently. Leeds kick off their Premier League campaign against Liverpool tomorrow. The English Championship gets underway this evening, however, with Watford's game at home to Middlesbrough kicking off at a quarter to eight. In golf, Graham McDowell has pulled out of the Irish Open in County Antrim later this month. He has chosen in the current environment to defend his title at Corrales Championship. While in America, Shane Lowry carried a 400 power round of 68 on day one of the US PGA Tour's Safeway Open in California. Seamus Seamus Power has slumped to a 75, while Russell Knox leads on nine under. 
Stephanie Meadow is best of the Irish on two under after round one of the ANA Inspiration, the second major of the year in California. American Nelly Corda leads on six under. While in boxing, Waterford Dylan Moran is back in action tonight as he faces into his 15th professional fight. He takes on Israel Munoz over six, over six three minute rounds tonight in Valencia. While in racing, there's an eight race card at Limerick this afternoon, which got underway about a quarter of an hour ago. <clears throat> and at Kilbegan, an eight race programme gets underway from 10 past three. Sports news on WLR is thanks to Virgin Media, Waterford.